a quick refresher. We're going to have four startups on stage competing. They're all hardware startups. They're going to have six minutes to present, six minutes of Q&A with their expert judges. Uh, so, I mean, that's pretty much covers it. I will introduce our awesome judges, who are the thing that makes this work. Uh, first up, we have Jonathan Trieste. He's founder and managing partner of Ludlow Ventures, where he has invested in over 50 technology companies. Prior to launching Ludlow, Jonathan worked as creative director for New York's Discovery Productions. Next, we have Dan Gilbert. You probably recognize him from like the last 30 minutes. Uh, he's a founding partner at Detroit Venture Partners, founder and chairman of Quicken Loans, and a majority owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers. And last but not least, we have Melanie Wise, CEO of Fetch Robotics, which is delivering advanced robots for the logistics industry. Prior to joining Fetch, Melanie was CEO and co-founder of Unbounded Robotics. Those are our judges. And we have our first company up on stage. It's Vineos. Presenting for Vineos are co-founders David Vayner and Jonas Lamont. Take it away, guys. All right. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'm David. Uh, this is my co-founder, Jonas. And I will present you, together with Jonas, how we at Vineos improve the analysis of biological cells and thereby will help to cure diseases. Today, in 2017, for more than 5,000 diseases, there's still no cure. A main reason for that is that the process to come up with a new drug is extremely complex, costs about $2.5 billion per drug, and takes up to 15 years. Making this process, or parts of it, more efficient will help to cure diseases. During the development of a new drug, drugs need to be tested in human cells before they're given actually to humans. While the quality of the cells used for these experiments has tremendously improved, the technologies to analyze the cells are limited. Most of us have probably seen a microscope before. They are large, they are used in combination with fluorescent dyes, and you need a lot of experience to use them properly. As an alternative, impedance spectroscopy was developed Devices are small, very easy to use, not a lot of experience required, and no fluorescent dyes. However, the results you get from this technology are pretty much often very much unclear. So they are regarded black boxes. Our third co-founder, Ralph, was therefore wondering whether there's a better way to analyze biological cells. And during his PhD, he found a solution. At Vineos, he's the technical mastermind. I myself have a background in business and biotechnology, and I do business development at Vineos. Jonas has degrees in physics and technology management, and is responsible for marketing and sales. He will also now run you through our product. Thank you, David. Actually, I'm very proud to be here on the stage today and to present you our solution, the CanQ. The technology of the CanQ was developed in over 30 years of basic research at the Max Planck Institute. Here are the advantages of this technology. It offers an electrical label-free readout that is very sensitive and specific for a very broad spectrum of cellular changes. This means we get a lot of information out of every measurement. Second, we can process all the gained information automatically, which really helps to make experiments automated and paralyzed. Second, the device itself is compact and can easily be integrated into every cell culture lab. So let's now switch to the overhead camera and check out the CanQ in action. Overhead camera, please? Yes. So as you can see, the CanQ consists of two components. There is the station and the CanQ chip. Development and design of the CanQ station were guided by our vision high-tech with sunlight simplicity. So we really try to make this high-tech product as easy to use as possible, even for the untrained user. We are now going to perform a so-called attachment assay. That is a question that is recently asked during cancer research. The question is, if I have a new drug candidate and apply it to my cancer cells, will that change their attachment behavior? Because if they lose their behavior to attach, the probability that cancer cells get out of the tumor and migrate through your body and start to form a metastasis is increased. And this is definitely not something you would like to happen, right? So my colleague David will now pipe human cells onto the CanQ chip. The chip is then injected into the measurement, uh, into the CanQ station, and the measurement can be started. So you see it's that easy. Even our business guy can do the workflow. Uh, back to PowerPoint, please. PowerPoint, please. So, this is what's happening now. The cells are at the moment in suspension, so they are flying around in the liquid. Now they will sediment to the CanQ chip. The CanQ chip is the heart of our technology. It's a semiconductor that consists of over 100,000 measuring pixels. Each measuring pixel is much smaller than a human cell, so just six micrometers in size. When the cells attach, they cause tiny electrical signals that the measuring pixels can detect, and that way we can come up with an electrical image of our cells. The biological process looks the following. First, the cells are in the suspension, then they go down, and then they're really starting to spread out. And this is what we would like to see from the experiment we just started. 
usually this process takes approximately 20 to 30 minutes. So we will just show some pre-recorded data. Could you switch to software? So what you see here, this red rectangle, is the surface of the KenQ chip. And as you can see, there are at the moment no cells attached to the surface. If we now move further in into the experiment, we see that now suddenly the first cells start to attach on the surface. So these le yellow little dots are actually human cells attaching on the semiconductor chip. If you now move further, then we can really see how they start to spread out. And if you zoom in, we really see they are moving towards the other cells and really um, yeah, connecting. And this is exactly what we like to see. So in this case, we would know, OK, our drug does not inhibit cell attachment. We're good to go for next experiments. Back to presentation, please. All right, so let me now show you that we're really measuring actual human cells and not just some, something else. So what you see here are human cells which we cultured for several days on our chip. They are in very well condition. And what we did now is we took the cells on the chip, labeled them with a fluorescent dye, and placed them under a microscope. And this is basically the result. So if you were now to overlay those two images, you would see that they perfectly match. So we get the same results than the industry standard, just with a much simpler workflow and without all the disadvantages of using a label. So what's our current status quo? Within the last two years, we built all the hardware included in the KenQ. That means we built our own semiconductor chip, all the electronics, firmware, a first set of, um, of software for data acquisition, and analysis software for cell attachment. Over the next years, we will come up with specific analysis software for the following applications, like cell depth, cell signaling, and electrophysiology, so really making brain-computer interfacing with this technology. At the moment, we sell our first devices. At the moment, we sell our products to the academic industry, where we already sold the first devices last year. In two years, we will come up with devices allowing for higher throughput, which are then tailored perfectly for the needs of the pharmaceutical industry. Long term, we aim to have one KenQ in every cell culture lab, in every hospital, and at every doctor to do point in care diagnostics. If you want to help us on that roadmap, visit our website or drop by at our booth at Eureka. Now we're happy to answer your questions. All right, so we start with something good. really straightforward and simple. <laughs> uh, judges, who wants to uh, step up? <coughs> I guess, I, I guess my first question for you would be is, uh, in terms of the, the chip fab, where are you guys in terms of developing that fab, and is it already done? Or are you going to have to make a large investment in getting the chip fab done for this process? So what we basically have um, is the silicon chip was developed in-house. It's based on these 30 years of basic research. Um, we have a company in Germany, it's called XFab, producing the chips. Um, and they are based on standard processes, so there's no need for any special development, and it's already set up and running. And it's a matter of scaling. If you want to scale it larger, we just need more money, um, but currently we're running on prototype um, run-throughs. Or, yeah, And do you own that IP? Could, could you speak up a little do you, bit? Do you own the IP? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the reason why we actually developed the chip ourselves again, um, because there was one, the IP situation wasn't 100% clear, and then we decided to just develop the entire chip completely anew. Um, of course, it makes it more expensive, but then IP situation is pretty much clear, um, and you don't interfere with anyone else. I'm just, you know, some of it's the, the volume. It was hard for me to hear everything going on, but so Jonathan walks in, and you, what are you, t what are you, I, I, don't, I don't really understand what's going on. You're putting his skin, what, what is happening in that it, process? What's it, going into what? It's a bit hard to understand you. Like, yeah, that's what, yeah, same thing, maybe that's okay. what. The, 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 can you hear? Yeah, I heard a little bit. I, the, the question really is, is, is like, what's the actual process? So you sell one into a lab. Yes. Who are you, like, how, who is the patient that you're testing this on? At the moment, it's not tested with patients. At the moment, it's just used for drug discovery. So not for diagnostic purposes, just for research and pharmaceutical industry. But, and what, then, what, but what is it? I don't even know what it is. I can't, it was hard to hear presentation. What, what are we actually putting on that? Slide in your what it, is it's, it's cells, human cells. cells. So what where, are you, do? where are you getting them from? Where is it coming Th from? This is like there are two types or three types of cells. The one is coming directly from the body, like a punch tissue okay. or punch uh, biopsies where you take the cells. You have them from cell banks or you have stem cells. This is where we get them from. We first start with uh, academic research um, built on the hardware. We have the different applications now over time. And then we'll go with higher throughput into the drug development um, industry. The idea that you can Im immediately see if there's a defect in the cells from this but technology? The idea is that usually during drug discovery, you start with very easy assays. So you have, you have different models in which you can test your, your potential new drug candidates. So in the beginning, you test them in a biochemical level that's extremely cheap. Then you go to cells, which gives you better insight. But 
we are in the process, then comes the animal testing, and then comes the clinical phase. And now making the cell-based testing more efficient helps to reduce animal testing and to replace biochemical testing. So you just get more efficient and cheaper during the process. So I, I don't want to pretend for a second that uh, I, I actually understand the technical components of what you're building. It seems very, very impressive. But just on a, on a, on a more base level, you mentioned that you, you're selling into academic institutions right now. How many of these devices go per cut? Like, would, one, would a lab have one of these? Would a hospital have one of these? H how many do you distribute to each, each potential customer? Mm -hmm. So when you look at the, the academic landscape, uh, we would say that there are about 5,000 academic institutes. Um, and if you take an average of 10 to 15 devices in this stage now that you can sell to them, um, that gives you at least like, let's say, 50 to 75,000 devices you can sell. But this is actually just the starting point to establish the technology in the market. There will be larger products, much, much higher throughput. Um, and then you can also build them modular-wise up. So meaning we sell the first product to one academic research, we can then build it up, and then they can still have a, large, a much larger throughput. So step-by-step step, um, increasing or coming up with new product generation as well as more software applications. So has this been independently verified by a third-party test system or anything mm -hmm. like that to, mm -hmm. to, to basically verify that any of this is mm -hmm. real and works? This is currently <laughs> in the process. I mean, we just, it took us like almost two years just to get the whole technology running because it's, I mean, from a tech perspective, it is quite complicated what is going in there. So we are just at the stage where we can start to perform the first measurements. And we are now in the stage that we do this with external partners and get it scientifically reviewed and then published. So, yes. And, and maybe to add one thing more, there's like these 30 years of basic research on it. So there's publications, but they're very much based on physics. Customers we have on the biological and medical area. Um, and so we now need to have more publication in these areas to build up trust for the technology. Just a quick follow up. Mm -hmm. What's the time to get through that review process and get independent verification? Mm -hmm. Um, depending on what kind of verification level you want to have. If it's just data coming from customers we already have, we started, like we sold the first devices already. Um, getting them, of course, published in a peer-reviewed article takes much longer. This is a process that takes like a year, year and a half, depending on where you want to publish. Of course, you want to get into the, like, the A journals, Nature, Science. That's the, the way where you do your marketing. Um, but getting data for, from customers and having them publish it and present it at fairs is something we can already do. Are you guys facing challenges because of the other company that had that recent sort of scandal or whatever you want to call it with the blood? The Ranos? Yes. We, we're, not, we're not the Ranos. We're actually no, based I, on solid uh, no, uh, I know, science. <laughs> I know you're not. So my question is, though, are yeah. you, you come into challenges trying to raise money just because mm -hmm. of what happened? Mm -hmm. yep, is, sure. that, is that something you have to... This is definitely something we have to take into account. Yeah. And this is also why we choose to start in the academic environment. Like yeah. we need to establish the technology where it's really proven by external scientists which, don't have a, which are not money driven. Mm -hmm. And once it's established there, we can move to industry and then to diagnostics. So okay. it's exactly to avoid what happened with Serenos. Yeah. Yeah. If I could just follow up, you got 42 seconds, I think, so yeah. they said. But it, if you were to just say, because you know, for, the, for the layman like I am, not, not a lot of science yeah. here. What is the, what's the main difference between what you do and what exists today? What, what, what is the difference? It, it makes yeah. the process you have much easier, much more reproducible, takes the human error out of it, um, and thereby improves the quality of how you do cell analysis and helps to cure diseases ultimately. That's basically what we do. Is, is the, is, are cur currently, are people analyzing it, and you're suggesting that the technology itself is going to do the analyzation by itself? Is that where the human error comes out? Where, is the accu where does the accuracy improve with your product? So um, I, I just answer the question anyhow, regardless of uh, that we run out of time. What you use in, for, for microscopes is you have these fluorescent dyes, and you can't use a lot of fluorescent dyes at the same time. So only one, only one measurement with one dye. You have a lot of measurements. You need a lot of cells, a lot of time, a lot of investment. With our technology, no dyes, a lot of in, uh, measurements at the same time with more information in a shorter period of time. That's basically where it comes all into. OK, right. so you want to buy five? Take home with us? OK, he'll take one. Cool. Thanks for All right. Thanks for, <laughs> All right, thanks for the lightning answer. All right. Give it up one more time for Vineos, <laughs> dropping a lot of science on stage. Thanks very much. All right. We are bringing up our thanks second company on stage. That's ShapeScale. It's going to take them a minute or two to get set up. So uh, judges, I'm curious. Like, I know that was a lot to digest, but does anyone sort of have any initial thoughts about what they thought about Vineos? Jonathan. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just too stupid to really understand what that exactly is. Uh, but look, if, if, they can, if they can take a current uh, problem right now, and they can eliminate error, they can do it faster, and they have technology that's already built, and they have IP around it, um, 
you know, sounds cool. But again, I, I, so far from what I'm accustomed to. Well, it seemed like you, you, you mostly understood that. Like, what did you think? Um, I think that, that they've got a long haul in front of them in terms of getting independent verification, which is going to be probably the linchpin to their long-term success. And I, I don't know. I mean, that, that's a hard one. Um, I mean, they'll probably have immediate success in academic markets, but uh, that's in many cases e much easier to do than with a commercial product. I think these medical device kinds of businesses, can you, am I, am I, is this working? I, I can. Can you guys again? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, pretty low. Can you mic up or, yeah, try that one. Can you hear me now? No, I'm, I wasn't <laughs> talking. Okay, now I am. Um, that is messed up. I had to try it. So, so the medical field is so technical and so specialized. I mean, it's, you can get the gist of it. It's very difficult for for people. Least, maybe you could you build robots, but I'm, you know, for us to try to figure out, you know, I made one. I made one of these investments in my life. It went south pretty bad, pretty quick, and that's probably because I just didn't have, and our, our team didn't have the expertise. But it certainly sounds if if what they're saying works out, it's obviously a, a great thing for the world and for their business. Because I would imagine a lot of times what people would say is that the, in that case, you'd maybe invest more in the team than you do in, in the product per, per se, because you don't necessarily have the background to evaluate it. True, but I think there's maybe you know, biotech or technology specialist VC kind of funds that you know, that's what they do. That, that would probably be their best bet.